In psychological terms, conformity refers to an individual's tendency to follow the unspoken rules or behaviours of the social group to which they belong. Researchers have long been curious about the degree to which people follow or rebel against social norms. One psychologist named Solomon Ash conducted multiple experiments to investigate the extent to which social pressure from a majority group could affect an individual to conform. Ash was not the first person to investigate conformity in social psychology, with Sharif in 1935 being one of the pioneers in the area. I did a video on him a while ago, so it should pop up at the top there. Sharif investigated whether individuals would conform to group norms when they are put in an ambiguous, unclear situation. Ash argued that because there was no clear answer to this experiment, how could we be sure that an individual person conformed when there was indeed no correct answer to conform to? So, in 1951, Ash devised what is now regarded as a classical psychology experiment. He got 50 male students from a college in the United States to participate in what was advertised as a vision test, using a line judgment task which involved comparing the lengths of several different lines. Ash put a naive participant, naive in this sense means that they were not aware of the experimental goals. He put this naive participant in a room with seven stooges or confederates. So these are people that were aware of the underlying goals and they had agreed in advance to what their responses would be when presented with this line task. So they were essentially actors and the real participants were these naive participants. So the real participant believed that these confederates were just real participants like themselves. So each person in the room had to state aloud which comparison line, A, B or C, was most like the target line. The answer was always obvious. So the real participant sat at the end of the row and gave his answer last. So after hearing what every other confederate or stooge had said. So there were 18 trials in total and during the first part of the procedure the confederates answered the questions correctly. So if there was one obviously long line they would pick that line out as being obviously longer than the others. However the stooges eventually began providing incorrect answers based on how they had been instructed by their researchers. Out of the 18 critical trials the confederates gave the wrong answer on 12 trials. So Ash was interested to see if the real participant would conform to the majority view. So even though the naive participant would likely have known what the correct answer was, would they have been influenced by the actors providing an incorrect choice, even though it was obvious that the incorrect choice was indeed incorrect. So in order to test whether it was indeed the social pressure that might have influenced the naive participant's decision, Ash also had a control condition where there were no confederates only the real naive participant. Ash measured the number of times each participant conformed to the majority view and he found that on average about one third of the participants who were placed in the situation went along and conformed with the clearly incorrect majority of the critical trials. So the, those critical trials being the 12 trials where the actors deliberately presented the incorrect answer. Over these 12 critical trials, about 75 of the participants conformed at least once to an obviously incorrect response, and 25% of the participants never conformed at all. Looking at the control group, where there were no actors presenting obviously incorrect choices, less than 1% of the participants gave the wrong answer. So, why did so many of the participants in the experimental condition conform so readily? When they were interviewed after the experiment, a lot of the participants said that they did not really believe in their conforming answers, i.e. the obviously incorrect choice, but had gone along with the group for fear of being ridiculed or thought as being peculiar. A few of them said they really did believe that the group's answers were correct. So apparently people conform for two main reasons. One, because they want to fit in with the group which is what Ash called normative influence, and two, because they believe the group is better informed than they are, which is informational influence. But this study did have some limitations. One of those is that the sample used is quite biased, so all the participants were male students who shared demographically 
similar characteristics such as age. This means that the study lacks population validity and the results cannot be generalized to, for instance, females or older groups of people. That's not to say that females or older people don't conform in social situations. It just means that ASH didn't test specifically for those population groups and so we can't really say with any empirical certainty. Some other critics thought that the high levels of conformity found by ASH were a reflection of American 1950s culture. In the 1950s, America was very conservative, involved in a big anti-communist witch hunt, which became known as McCarthyism, against anyone who was thought to hold sympathetic left-wing views. Conformity to American values was expected, and support for this criticism comes from studies in the 1970s and 1980s that shows lower conformity rates than what Ash found. After his initial study in 1951, Ash went on to conduct further experiments in order to determine which specific factors influenced how and when people conform. He found that conformity tends to increase when more people are present. However, there is little change once the group size goes beyond four or five people. He also found that conformity increases when the task at hand becomes more difficult. For instance, when Ash made the lines of the line test uh, more similar in length, i.e. making it harder to distinguish which was the correct answer, the levels of conformity increased. This suggests that when we are uncertain, we look for others to, for confirmation, and the more difficult the task, the greater the level of conformity. He also found that conformity tends to decrease when people are able to respond privately. This suggests that when there is no fear of rejection from the group, normative influences are not as powerful as when our decisions are made open to the group. And finally, he found that conformity increases when other members of a group are of higher social status. So when people view the others in the group as more powerful, influential, or knowledgeable than themselves, they are more likely to go along with their group and conform to their decisions. And that's it for this video. Hope you found it interesting. Remember to drop a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. See you all next time.